All right. So that is all that stuff we just barely said. Um, whatever, this is out of order. Okay. This idea of the common ion and like having strong acids or strong bases and weak acids or weak bases is going to lead us to this idea that we call a buffer. And you really, really should read chapter 17. I know that I don't force you to, but your own desire to not fail the next test should encourage you. You should be motivated. If you want to pass the AP test, you should uh, definitely really uh, read chapter 17. So what we're talking about now is a buffer. Solutions of a weak conjugate acid-base pair is defined as a buffered system. Buffers are particularly resistant to pH changes when a strong acid or base is added. Okay, and then we're going to draw this out and hopefully get it to make some sense. So, first off, once again, today we did two things. One would work as a buffer, and one would not work as a buffer, based on the definition on this screen. Which one would not work as a buffer? The first math and picture we did, or the second one? The second one will not work as a buffer. We have to have a solution that has both a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a strong base and its con or sorry, a weak base and its conjugate acid. So here we go. Draw this out. So we have a beaker. And the easiest one to do here is to define the buffer using the weak acid of HF, because F is way easier to write than C2H3O2 every time, right? Since we know this is a weak acid, this picture might get really ugly, so I don't know, but whatever. Since we know that it's weak acid, we know that the majority of the stuff in here is HF that's still together. But some of it has some has dissociated to H plus and some is F minus. All right, so this is the acid I'm going to use. And then I come along and I add NAF. Um, Na will dissociate and be pretty much useless, so I'm just going to put Na plus over there. But I now have increased the concentration of F minus. What's that? HF is a weak acid, and AF is a strong electrolyte. Okay, are we good so far? So in this system or solution, uh, we have all of those parts. And you do need to also realize this is in water, so there's also some like H2O, but whatever. The, it, it is in a solution with water. Okay, so this is a buffered system for the following reasons. If I come along and I add a strong base like NaOH. It's a strong base, which means it completely associates, which means I'm adding 100% OH pretty much. The pH should skyrocket, correct? But here's what happens. Na will come in here, and it's going to be pretty much useless, so I'm going to park it right there again. Okay? The conjugates of strong or weak things don't do anything. Like they hang out in the solution, but they don't party. They were with something strong, which means in solution they're now alone. Okay. But I have now added OH- to this system. But it's just fine. Because 
I have what in that system to take care of that? I have H plus. This H plus will find that OH minus to produce more water. But now look, this is tricky, but you got to follow me. As soon as this H plus bonds to OH minus, then another one of these will break apart to replace the H plus. So, here's the deal. Before and after, the amount of H plus has stayed the same. Before and after, the amount of OH minus has stayed the same. If I don't change H plus or OH minus, I don't change the pH very much. Because the pH does change a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, because I did change the concentration of the acid. Okay, that, and we're talking a small amount. So this buffered system will accept straight up hydroxide and come out with a very small change in pH. Now, it can't like absorb very much. Like we're talking the addition of like 10 milliliters. A buffered system is good at, at staying within a pH range as long as you don't flood the system. Because eventually, if, if you add too much of this, this isn't there anymore, and now you're just adding straight OH, and it will skyrocket. So like the graph, the buffer would stay just slightly increasing, and then all of a sudden you'd get to a point where all of the H plus was absorbed, and then the pH would just go straight up pretty much. It's a lot like a titration graph, which we'll see later. All right, so here we go. This buffered system accepted strong base, but can it handle acid? Okay, so now we're going to add some HCl. We know that this is a strong acid, so it's going to be essentially adding straight up H+, correct? What's this part going to do again? CL's going to do nothing, right? So we'll put it over here. Once again, it's the conjugate of a strong acid, which means it won't reassociate. Go ahead. So in this diagram, are we just no longer adding NaOH like at all? Yeah, yeah, NaOH. yep, NaOH. So this is like gone. We're just saying what would happen. We figured out. Sure yeah. that we are adding more to this. Right, so that one's out of the picture now. And we're just talking about how it would accept H plus and be just fine. So real quick, you tell your lab partner, what do you think will happen to the H plus in this system? Okay, it sounded like everyone was on the same page. This H plus will come in here and it will bond to the excess F minus, right? That excess F minus was in there because we had added NAF in the first place. And as long as there is excess F minus, then we can add H plus and the pH will pretty much do nothing. It will stay the same. Now, it does change a little, because remember, if H plus bonds with F minus, we have adjusted the concentration of HF itself. And so that is a slight change in pH, but not one that we would expect by adding HCl. Because if I just take water and I add a small amount of HCl, it's going to go from 7 to 1 in like 20 drops. But if I have a buffer, it's going to go from like a 7 to a 6.8 in the same amount of drops, which is almost no change, right? Okay. So this is how a buffer works, and it's important that you understand the chemistry behind it so you can understand the math behind it. Go ahead. I don't understand how NAF doesn't change the pH. Because like Lachette, Lears... It does. Oh, so it does. It does. Um, but we're not comparing 
the pH before NaF was added or after. We're just saying we have this already made. It's at a certain pH. Now what? But yeah, you are perfectly right. No. We're going to make the buffer with the parts and then measure what happens to it after. You use buffers in any experiment where you want the pH range of something to stay pretty much the same. And the greatest experiment in our world is the human body. And it's just one gigantic buffered system working constantly. Where we can take in small amounts of strong acid or base and our body is there to handle it. It's the carbonate bicarbonate buffered system where it can accept an H or donate an H and we're going to be just fine. So. Um, it's a very important biological process. Is that a hand? Okay. Okay, so we okay with this? All right. So this is just the same thing um, and still the same thing. Buffer, if a small amount of hydroxide is added to equal molar solution of HF in NAF, for example, the HF reacts with OH to make F minus in water. Why does this not work? If acid is added, the F minus reacts to form HF in water. All right? So don't really do any of the next three slides in your notes. These are just proofs. And I would be a better teacher probably if I made you do proofs, but I don't really care about them, and I hated them when I was a kid. But whatever. Here we go. Consider the equilibrium constant expression for the dissociation of a generic acid of HA. So we have Ka equals that, which we're comfortable with. Rearranging this slightly, we can say Ka equals that times that. Taking the negative log of both sides, we get the negative log of Ka, which is pKa, equals the negative log of H plus, which is pH, plus the negative log of A minus over HA. Okay? This is just log stuff. We just took the negative log of every part, and that's acceptable. And we arranged this because dividing, when you use logs, if you have a division, it's really a subtraction, which is magical. <laughs> Boom! Wow, okay, cool. Um, anyway, so we end up that we can rewrite that into this equation in this format. That was ugly. All right, rearranging this becomes this. The pK pH, sorry, equals pKa plus the log of base over acid. All right? This is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. This is how I prefer it personally myself. So, we don't have to do all that stuff we just did. We don't have to do an ice table or anything like that. We can plug everything in here that if we want to know the pH of a solution, we... We need to know the Ka for the weak acid, which will be given to you in the problem or in a table that you could look up. And you take the negative log of that, and then you add the log of your anion over your concentration of your acid. This is the equation, the one equation to rule them all, essentially. You're looking good, Murray. Flexing it out. What's that? I would write that for sure. You're going to use this roughly one million times between now and the end. All right, we got that down. Okay, so what is the pH of a buffer 
that is 0.12 molar in lactic acid and 0.1 molar in sodium lactate. Ka for lactic acid is 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. All right, so this is super easy. You just need to know which part is your acid and which part is the common ion. And usually that's easy because the acid will say what we're acid, <laughs> like almost every time. And then the other number will be the other one. Sure. <laughs> it's beautiful. That's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we just use Henderson Hasselback. Yep. Thank you. We usually every year have just reduced it to the David Hasselhoff equation. Yeah. It just kind of evolved. So you take pKa. P means negative log, right? Yeah. Of that. And then log of your base over your acid, there are your concentrations. Will you do that? You can obviously see that the answer is 3.77, but try and prove it to yourselves. Yeah, it is very convenient. But do the math and make sure you get that value. All right, so this part's the easy part. The rest is where we have to understand chemistry and math. So we're going to calculate... the pH after the addition of 20 milliliters of 0.25 HCl. And I'll walk you through how to do this. <clears throat> so, this thing the first thing to know is, would this be a buffer? Now, it says the word buffer in the problem, but it won't do that on the AP test. All right? So we know that it's a buffer, which means it can accept acids and bases and not change that much. All right. So what we do is we figure out what this is going to affect. If, if we add acid, first off, Make sure that your brain is smart enough to know that your pH answer is less than what it was. Because if, if you do this math and you get a, a number above 3.77, you screwed up. You did it backwards. Okay? We're still going to use the same exact reaction that or equation pH equals the negative log or the pKa and the Ka was 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth um, is it plus or minus I should remember plus the negative log and it is your a minus over HA, correct? Right? So we just need to know what happens here. Are we ready? So we had, what was it, 10 and 0.1, or 0.1 and 0.12? Okay, these, we're not putting those values in, but that's what we had to start with. But adding acid will reduce this because the H is grabbing, all right? So this will go down equal to the amount of moles that I added. So this is 0 0.02 liters, 1 liter, 0.25. So is that 0 0.005? What is that? 0 0.005. Okay, so that's the moles of H plus I'm adding. The base goes down that. And the acid goes up that same value. 
and those are your new numbers that go here. Sorry. What what is that? Nine five? No, one nine five? Is that right? I'm adding, thank you. I did them backwards. They're written right there. Point zero zero nine five. No, it should be point zero. Okay, and this is tell me here. I'm obviously wrong. Thank you. I'm going to erase those parts just so we can write our answer. What do we get? Three point seven three. All right, so that's the first question. Is that less than? Yes. So I, I had to have done the right. Because the only way you screw up, besides that I almost added, even though I wrote a minus, is if you put the things in the wrong spot. If you make your adjustments to the wrong way in the fraction, you'll just be off chemistry-wise, and that's easy to fix, because then you just go flip that. Okay, 30 seconds. Raise your hands if today made sense. Not that bad then. Okay, I would do some homework problems.